Hello everyone, my name is Ninua and welcome to my unhurried playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn Part 6.1. And my friends, today is a day. The MSQ finally takes us to explore beyond Gridania and the Black Shroud. We will actually visit two new cities today, but to do that, we need to resume the MSQ. So without further ado, let's go! Now, in the previous video, if you remember, we stopped the MSQ at the point where Mune asked us to visit Ken Isena, the other Sitsia of Gridania, at the Lotus Stand. Now, you may not know where the Lotus Stand is, which is fair enough, because this is actually a secluded area near the Conjurer's Guild, which you can only visit when a quest takes you there. And here there is a silent Conjurer standing at the entrance of the Lotus Stand, so we need to talk to them in order to access. You are Ninua Uzume, are you not? I bid you welcome, my lady. The other sits here left word that you would be joining her at the Lotus Stand. May I show you in? This place is just so pretty. I love the uh, big table and chairs and imagine having work meetings in such an environment <laughs> instead of a regular meeting room in an office somewhere. Everything about it is so serene. <sighs> Anyways, time to talk to Ken Isena and move the story forward. I have looked forward to your coming, Ninua. But tell me, are you recovered? I am most glad of that. Now, I hope you will not doubt the earnestness of my concern, but I would ask a favor of you. Nor can I deny that I summoned you here in part with this in mind. Know, however, that I proceed only upon the understanding that you are rested and well. Thank you for hearing me out. Level 15, the Gridanian Envoy. Can Isana wouldn't trust you with a task of great import. The wards are 5,760 points of experience, 286 gil, and a wind-up airship minion, which is a new type of item we'll discuss once we receive it. I have written a letter to my counterparts in the Eorzean Alliance. The Battle of Cartano and the Calamity that followed claimed countless souls and left countless more bereft and alone. In the dark days that followed, many were the survivors who thought themselves less fortunate than the dead. Five years have come and gone, but the land and the people still bear the wounds of the devastation. Nor are we any closer to learning the fate of the Warriors of Light. Yet so long as we live, never must we give up hope. We owe this to those who laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. In remembrance of them, a memorial service will soon be held upon the anniversary of the Battle of Cartano. This missive bears the details of that service. You graciously accepted the part of emissary in the recent ceremony. Should you be so willing, I would now make you my envoy and have you bear my message to our allies. 
your dedication to the people of Gridania rather fond memories in me, and I would choose no other for the role. Will you do me this favor? Humbly, I thank you. As you are no doubt aware, our partners in the Eorzean Alliance lie some considerable distance away, nor are Ulda and Limsalaminsa close to one another. Yet fear not, for I have no intention of subjecting you, mine own newly anointed envoy, to a journey which would take weeks by land. No, I mean for you to travel by air. Receive of me this airship pass. With it, you may make use of the skyways that connect the three city-states of the Alliance. The airship landing is situated upon the lower floor of the Carline Canopy. Simply show your pass and you will be admitted to the departure area. Before you embark upon your journey, however, you would do well to seek the worldly wisdom of Mune. Few forest-born Gridanians know more of the lands beyond the Twelfth Wood than she. In better times, airships were available for the convenience of one and all. Alas, the risk that our crafts may fall to Imperial attacks has forced a reduction in the number of flights. Consequently, it has become necessary to restrict air travel only to those whose need is great. Such individuals may petition the relevant parties to be issued an airship pass. As you may have deduced, I myself am one such party. Yet I was not alone in desiring that you be granted the privilege of air travel. Such is the potential you show. We have no doubt but that you will reward our faith in you, Ninur. By the power vested in me, I bid you journey forth as my envoy into the great realm of Eorzea. Walk her field, brave her seas, and strive to know her better. And wheresoever you go, go without fear, for the past shall ever be revealed to those who are true of heart. Guided by the crystal's light, set forth and discover your destiny. And we now have access to airships, which is going to change pretty much everything. We are not confined to uh, Gridania and the Shroud anymore. So we need to exit the Lotus Stand first. And then go to the Carline Canopy to talk to Mune. It is good to see you up and about again, Ninua. Tell me, did you pay the elder Sitsir a visit as I bade? Appointed personal envoy? And now you are to bear the elder Sitsir's missive to our allies. Well, it seems you've made an impression on the great woman. I can't argue with her judgment, though. You've earned this honor with tireless hard work, and anyone who says you don't deserve it has better not do so in my hearing. I find myself praising you often of late, but Mother is truly proud of you. Short of a warrior of light, I can imagine no better adventurer to represent us. And that, my girl, 
et Sam Compliment. But I've flattered you enough for one day, and I don't want your head to get too big or you'll struggle to lock it around the realm. Speaking of which, Eosa is a big old place. Now that you have an airship pass, you can really start to broaden your horizons. The sky is quite literally the limit. Even if your errand didn't call for it, I would strongly suggest visiting the two other city-states of the Alliance before you go anywhere else. They are, of course, Limselominsa, City of Pirates, and Ulda, Jewel of the Desert. Once you've acquainted yourself with them, you can turn your sights on whichever less trodden region takes your fancy. The Calamity changed the face of Eosia, and much of her now lies in shadow, beyond man's ken. It's a veritable playground for a wide-eyed adventurer like your good self. Mind you, it won't all be fun and games. Each nation faces its fair share of problems, from internal strife to conflict with the beast tribes and their primals. So don't be too surprised if you find yourself embroiled in the odd and savory situation on your travels. But no matter what difficulties you encounter, I am confident that you will pull through and emerge the stronger for the experience. These are interesting times for Eosia Ninua. It's been five years now since the calamity, but folk are finally beginning to look to the future. A period of great change is upon us, and you have a part to play in it. And if that prospect doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. And it is now time to take to the skies! So for that, we just need to head downstairs to the airship landing, which will become incredibly familiar to you very quickly, and talk to Lionele, the airship ticketer. Greetings, good madam. This is a reservation counter for Limsa Luminsa bound flights. Are you not Ninua Uzumi, the other Sitsia's personal envoy? We at High Weed Skyways are honored to serve you. Will you be flying with us today? Yep, we will indeed. So you don't usually get to that part of the airship landing. You normally only talk to the people at the counter and you are whisked directly aboard. Attention all passengers, the airship bound for Limsa Luminsa is about to depart. Please make your way to the boarding gate. Farewell, Ninua. One day, minstrels will sing of your deeds. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal. And weirdly enough, immediately following this, there is going to be a cutscene containing major information regarding the main plotline of our realm reborn. So, if you want to avoid spoilers, please stop the video now and jump to the next chapter, spoiler cut 1, or to the 20 minutes 58 seconds mark. By the way, side note, I've just noticed since uh, today uh, that chapters have been enabled on my videos. I'm not sure I meet the requirements, but I'm gonna take it. As you know, my videos are quite long, so 
anything that can help the navigation for you guys, I'm happy about. Last warning, spoilers coming up now. つまりの神が調理を抜骨する証拠の地二度にわたり帝国の構成を跳ね抜けし今は敷地かくしてエオルゼア侵攻は停滞し奴のような俗物の台頭を許すこととなったそして目手を計画ですら第七霊祭なる最悪を引き起こしただけに終わり支配構造は何一つ変わっておらん不浄不定不足この世界はあまりに狂っている救わねばならん我々が愚かな民を未来へと導く技術店長は天気シールドの窓口長にお越しくださいなあガイウス軍団長はなんでエオルゼアに先日の FP 式でも言っていただろう大きな作戦があるんだってよ本国は俺たちを放置してきたんだぜ今さら何をやろうっていうのさガイウス閣下のご意向に疑問でもあるのかネロ様お前どこの生まれなんだでありますじ自分はアラミゴでありますコードネームはハミングウェイ<笑>ふんやっぱりな
ケース五十八。パラメキア情報機関からの報告の通りだぜ。And we arrive just in time for a lovely sunset of uh, Limsa Limsa. A quick warning, we are going to discuss the state of affairs with two imported people of Eosea in the next two cutscenes, which means there are going so to be some light spoilers. If that bothers you, I'm going to tell you exactly when to cut and you just need to jump to the following chapter. Okay, in order to proceed, we need to leave the landing area. Ah, you must be the envoy from Gridania. Welcome to Limsa Luminsa, my lady. Admiral Bluffy's win awaits your arrival. You are the Gridanian envoy? Welcome to Limsa Luminsa. The Admiral has been looking forward to your arrival. Please proceed to the cross lift at your earliest convenience. It will take you to Bulwark Hall. Once there, pray speak with Zencel. He will be pleased to show you in to the Admiral's command room on the bridge. So we need to go to Bulwark Hall. And it's just ahead. Greetings, madam, and welcome to our fair city. If you would permit me to examine the seal on the missive you carry. Yes, everything seems to be in order. My apologies. We cannot afford to be complacent, you understand. Please step this way. ようこそ海の都リムサロミンサへこの国のグランドカンパニー国家団の最高司令官都督のメルイブブルーフィスウィンだ早速要件を聞こうか some light spoilers ahead, so jump to the next chapter now, or to the 26 minute 46 seconds mark. Memorial service to another the fallen. Seven hells, has it been five years? Five years since the Gallian Empire sought to wrest Eorzea from our grasp. It was in answer to the imperial threat that the city-states formed the Grand Companies and forged the Eorzean alliance anew, but Gallimald was not content to wager all on a simple contest of martial might. They had other plans, the Meteor Project. Legatus Nael van Darnes has take him, intended to cleanse our realm by snatching the lesser moon Dalamud from the heavens and casting it down upon our heads. Desperate to prevent this lunatic scheme, we marched our forces to the Cartano Flats and there met the 7th Imperial Legion in battle. Never have I seen a fight like the Battle of Cartano, and I have seen full many. 
but though we gave no quarter, spared not one ounce of effort, we could not prevent what followed. From inside the shell of Delamud came a winged nightmare, a dragon the size of a bloody city. Twas the elder primal Bahamut, bent on making a nace hell of Eorzea. In the space of a breath, the legions of the Empire were set aflame, while our own armies fared little better. Twas as if the whole world was burning. Words cannot well describe the scene. And yet, by some miracle, a few among us were spared. Even as I steeled myself for death, a blinding white light enveloped me, robbing me of my senses. When I regained them, the dragon was gone, and the still smouldering land was warped beyond all knowing. Were Archon Louis was still with us, he would doubtless shed some light on these unfathomable happenings. Alas, he is not, and I fear we will want for his wisdom in the days to come. For while our nations struggled to recover from the devastation, the beastmen called forth their damned primals to torment us anew. Unless we put aside our differences and rebuild now, our foes will catch us unprepared. And I speak not only of the beast men. Do not imagine that the Empire has forsaken its claim on Eorzea. The Imperials crowd our borders, waiting to strike. Demitel, we need champions to replace those we lost. But such thoughts are worse than worthless. Time is short and none will serve us save ourselves. It is a duty of every soul who survived the calamity to work together for the good of Eorzea, and this memorial service may be the very thing to unite us. Aye, Kani Sena has the right of it. I accept her proposal. Your duty is done here, adventurer. I will see to it that the Elder sits here, receives my reply. You travel next to Ulda, yes? Pray give my regards to General Roban. Oh, and tell him the wolf have been sniffing around the stables. A private jest, and one in poor taste, but I would have you tell it all the same. Fare you well, Ninua. May the navigator guide you on your journey. And that's it for us here in Limsaluminsa for now, because the main story quest will take us back here really soon. I am going to travel straight to Uldar now. There's just one thing I'm going to do, and that's attune to the Etherite. And now I'm going to set it not as a home point, but as a favored destination. And what it will do for us is that it will have the price of travel. As you can see now, standing next to it, traveling to it would cost me 100 gil. That's a minimum amount you can spend on a teleport. But once it's registered as a favorite destination, it only costs 50 gil. And as you can see, we're pretty far away from uh, Gridania because that was, that was 600 gil to return there. But to be fair, we have new Gridania on the return spell, so it doesn't matter. You can set up to three favored destinations. So set them wisely. And now in order to proceed with the MSQ, we need to return to the airship landing and to, 
to the Tikata. Greetings, madam. This is a counter for passengers travelling to Uldar. A pleasure to serve you again, madam. Are you ready to board the airship to Uldar? And so, from now on, this cutscene of you departing and then the arrival uh, will play every time you take the airship. You can interrupt it and you can also go under Character Configuration General to check the option of not having it play anymore. So that's up to you. I leave it on, but you can remove it so that you don't have to watch the same cutscene over and over. Okay, so same thing as in Limsa Lominsa. Ah, you must be the envoy from Gridania. Welcome to Ulda, madam. The flame general awaits your arrival. Welcome to Ulda, madam. We have been expecting you. Flame General Roban will receive you in the fragrance chamber. Please take the lift down to the hosting strip and speak with Bartholomew at the Royal Promenade. And so we have to go to the hosting strip. which is centered around this circular force. The Gridanian Envoy, I presume. Would you be so good as to allow me to inspect the missive you bear, madam? My thanks. Ah, yes. The seal of the Elder sits here. Please proceed. Quick spoiler warning, in case you want to avoid all references to the main plotline, there will be a discussion of past events and the current situation related to that. Mild spoilers, but still, if you would prefer, you can jump straight to the next chapter, spoiler cut 3, or move directly to the 37 minute 2 seconds mark. Cartano. Aye, I remember bloody Cartano. Do you know what happened that day, adventurer, when we took to the field against the Garleans? So my counterparts have educated you. Hmm. Oh, trust Melwib to make light of our wolf problem. Women always did have a black sense of humor. Wolves are blood-dusty beasts upon which one cannot turn one's back. 
it is only a matter of time before they bite. So it was with the Gallians, 50 years ago. No sooner had they learned how to use Magitech that they began seizing territory from their neighbours. Led by their legatus, Solus Tzoskalvus, they swiftly brought the other nations of Ilsabad to heel, and so the legatus became an emperor and his republic an empire. An empire which then set its sights upon Eorzea. But the conquering emperor is no an old man of four scores winters. His health is failing and he has no clear successor. Like as not, this is why the Gallians have been quiet of late. But the 14th Imperial Legion is still entrenched within our borders, and their commander, Legatus Gaius van Balsa, has long harbored ambitions of conquest. Were he to strike now, I fear we would fall like so many others before us, and not only Ulda, but Gridania and Limsa Luminsa as well. For the calamity brought the lot of us to our knees, and we have yet to get up. We barely have the strength to stand against the beast tribes, never mind the primals they mean to summon. We are a realm divided, adventurer, an alliance in name only. But the wolf cares not for the plight of its prey. The galleons stir, and the admiral would not let it go unnoticed. All other concerns pale in comparison to the empire, even the beast tribes and their bloody primals. We must stand united once more, that much is clear, and if we are to do so, we must remember the cause which last brought us together. Can E will have our memorial. We will honor the memory of the fallen. We will remind the people what their brothers and sisters fought and died for. Shall I inform the Sultana and the Syndicate? I will speak with Her Grace myself. Very good, sir. The Elder sits here will have my reply anon. My thanks to you, adventurer. And that's the Gridanian Envoy complete. You may now make use of the airship routes connecting the three nations. Before you may board an airship, you must pay the requisite fare in gil. And the fare is 120 gil each time. So we've just unlocked an achievement. And we obtained a whistle for our first minion, which triggered the tutorial. You have obtained a whistle with which you can summon your very own minion. To learn the call minion action, you must first use the whistle. Once you have used the item, a new entry will appear in the minion guide under character in the main menu. You can either initiate the action from this menu or set it to your cross hotbar and initiate it from there. To send your minion away, simply reselect the summoning icon. Minions can be summoned or dismissed at any time and the whistle has no recast timer. Once you have learned the summoning action, you will never lose it, and it can be used with all classes or jobs. You can only summon one minion at a time. While minions do not generate any enmity, neither will they participate in battle. If you are KO'd, your minion will simply wander off back to wherever it is it rests until you call upon it again. So, let's check. As you can see, we have a minion guide entry under character, but it is grayed out for now. That's because, remember, in order to call on our minion, we need to use the whistle, the corresponding whistle, a first time. So for that, you right-click it, select Use, 
and you can now summon the Windup airship minion. And the minion guide is available with the minion airship entry. Wind up airship. Summon your wind up airship minion, a fully operational model of the legendary vessel, the Invincible. Despite it being the first and most ambitious undertaking by House Wind Skyways founder Tatarora, the Invincible actually never took flight. Its 10 year construction period plagued by accident, material shortages, sabotage, and outright incompetence. Oh, that sounds like a terrible and very costly endeavor. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! No, it's an airship! No, it's Inspector! Which is a quote. So for each of these icons, if you hover over it, you will have a quote from a character. And this one, we will learn more about it right after we complete... Um, a Rem Reborn 2.0 at least the main storyline and here I've, I've called that the wind up airship I'm going to show it, that to you a little bit better so as you can see it follows it's not the most interesting or interactive minion there is out there but that's fine that's the first one and here I'm looking at it from first person view. But it looks like a nice toy. All right, as you can see, Bartholomew has the next MSQ for us. But I am not going to pick it up now because it will take us back to Limsaluminsa. And right now I want to spend some time exploring Ulda and what it can offer us. And I'm going to do that over the this video and the next one. The first order of business though as with any time you arrive to a new city and you want to explore is to attune to all the Ethernet shards. So I'm going to go on a hunt for them around the city. There are two on this level, the one we attuned to when you, we arrived. And a second one a bit out of the way. which can be found here in front of the Alchemist Guild. So that's it for this floor. Then we have to go downstairs. So for that you can take the lift or you can follow one of the connecting passes. Or alternatively, you can jump down here. Uh, I didn't this time, but you'll see me do that from time to time. And this lower floor is divided into two parts. So here, the Ethernet chart in front of the Coliseum, which is where the Gladiators Guild is. And next we have the other Disciples of Hand and Land, one after each other.
And the next one and last one in this area is going to be on the Sapphire Avenue Exchange, which is basically the markets for Ulda. And from there, we are going to move up north to the last area we need to cover. This one is pretty important because it is the Athena chart located just in front of the Adventurer's Guild. So you're going to use it a lot. And conveniently, the Chocobo Cube is just in front, so I'm going to unlock it. here on the left you may have quickly spotted it there was a blue marker and we are going to return to this shortly I'm just going to complete the Ethernet before we turn to that and just like in Limsa Luminsa I am going to set the Etherite as a favored destination. It's not so much to travel from city to city because traveling by airship is actually cheaper even with the uh, half price. On the Gridania, because I set it as my home point, is free. So I'm always going to use return to go there. But you use it a lot when you are exploring the, in the areas around the cities and you want to return quickly. Okay, and this is the last one if in front of the uh, Thaumaturge Guild. You have attuned yourself to all the Ethernet shards in Ulda, the Gate of Nold, the Gate of Sal, the Gate of the Sultana and the Airship Landing are now accessible as Ethernet destinations. And here we have the confirmations. So just as in Gridania, completing the Ethernet unlocked additional destinations. And just as in Gudania, these destinations are either outside of the city walls or the airship landing. Okay, so I've just quickly removed the airship from view. And now we're going to talk to that guy with a blue quest, the well-heeled youth. The poor tiny Lala fells with all his packets. Level 15. It could happen to you. A well-heeled youth on Emerald Avenue appears to have been the beneficiary of some good fortune and may not be adverse to sharing it. So rewards are simply 239 a gil, but that's not why we are doing this. Do be careful with those. Break anything and I shall be forced to deduct it from your salary. Beg pardon? What is my loyal manservant carrying? Why, uh, a not so small fortune in prizes, I believe won by yours truly in the gold saucer. You have heard of the gold saucer? Nay. E gods, woman, you might at least try to keep up with the times. It's only the Sultanate's newest and finest place of entertainment. Thrill to the sight of majestic birds roaring down the street at the chocobo races. Beat your wits against your peers at the triple triad tables. At the Gold Saucer, one can do all of this and more. And if you know what you're about, 
like you'll walk out a wealthier woman than you entered. If there is a better place to shake off one's care after a grueling day of promenading, I've never heard of it. Did I mention the prizes? Ah, but I dare say you'd rather discover them for yourself. Yes, I'll wager you're wondering just how in Sal's good name you can experience the wonders of the gods or so first hand. Am I right or am I right? Ha! I thought as much. Well, since this has been my lucky day, I don't see why it shouldn't be yours too. I just so happen to have a spare golden airship ticket, you see. Consider it a gift from me to you, my lady. Just show that ticket to the fine lady over at the landing and you'll have a seat on the next airship bound for reverie and riches. Be fairly warned, though. You may expect no mercy from me should our pass cross at the triple triad tables. Ne not so much as a nonce. Ha! Alright, so let's see by ourselves if it's as great as he says. So first we need to head for the airship landing and talk to the lady at the counter. This is a reception desk for flights bound to the Mandeville Gold Saucer. Before proceeding, I must ask that you submit your ticket for inspection. You do have a ticket, yes? Golden Airship Ticket allows the bearer passage on High, High Wind Skyway's private charter flights to and from the Mandeville Gold Saucer. It appears that everything is in order. An airship will be departing shortly, before the next bell. Shall I reserve a seat for you? Okay, I didn't do that on purpose, but now I'm happy I went at down. Look how pretty it is. And I love Cactua. Well, Sabotendo. Well, you have to admit, it's a place quite unlike the others. And the skill is huge too, which uh, as one of the um, NPCs standing there says, makes you wonder what the person behind this is trying to compensate for. And obviously we get a tutorial to start us off. Welcome to the Mandeville Gold Saucer, where all your dreams can come true. That is, all your dreams can come true if you have enough Mandeville Gold Saucer points (MGP). Gil can be exchanged for MGP at the main counter in the middle of Entrance Square. The current rate is 10 Gil for 1 MGP. Uldan Low prevents the Gold Saucer from exchanging MGP if the patron already possesses more than 500, which you're going to get incredibly quickly. MGP cannot be converted back into kill, but the points can be used to purchase an assortment of wonderful prizes from the prize claim I tendered, also located at the main counter of Entrance Square. 
Level 15, World of Wonders. The attendant at the airship landing seems eager to welcome you to the gold saucer. Welcome, honored guest, to the Mandeville Gold Saucer, where your wildest dreams are ever but a card or a chocobo speak away from coming true. If this is your first visit, nothing would please us more than to give you a full tour of our establishment that you might enjoy its wonders to the fullest. At the conclusion of the tour, it is our custom to offer our esteemed patrons a complimentary gift straight from the vaults of our illustrious proprietor himself. Consider it Lord Mandaville's way of personally thanking you for your patronage. Should you wish to take the tour, pray proceed to the main counter over there and speak with the receptionist. On behalf of the management, may I take this opportunity to thank you for choosing the gold saucer. Rest assured, my colleagues and I will spare no... ...effort in seeing that your visit is a pleasant and profitable one. May fortune smile upon you. Note that the tour is not comprehensive, there are a few things that it kind of leaves off, but that's okay, it gets you started at least. Welcome, traveler, to the Gold Saucer. This is the main counter where you can purchase tickets for the mini cackpot, acquire and redeem Mandeville Gold Saucer points and much, much more. But what in the world are Mandeville Gold Saucer points, I hear you cry? I must ask you the question and one which I shall be only too happy to answer. But first, if I may direct your gaze to your left. Beyond those majestic gates, you will find Chocobo Square, home to the Chocobo Racing Circuit. Aye, what Chocobo owner has not dreamed of pitting their fleetest bird against the realm's finest in a pulse-quickening dash for fame and fortune? Truly, it is a sport of sultans. And should you desire a more elaborate contest of strategy, you will surely find it in Minion Square, at the Lord of the Minions' Tables, where would-be generals beat armies of minions against one another in battles for honor and glory. Now, where were we? Ah yes, Mandaville Gold Saucer points. But simply MGP, as we call it for short, is the currency by which dreams are bought and sold within these halls. But my associate here beside me can tell you more, including how to go about acquiring some MGP of your very own. Pray speak with him to continue your tour. So he is just the receptionist well, the information desk, basically, and you have different functions all around the entrance square. So you're about to experience the wonders of the Gold Saucer for the first time? How I envy you! Ah, but before you venture forth, you'll want to exchange a share of your guild for MGP, a service which it is my great honor to provide. With MGP in your coin purse, you'll be able to enjoy all of the fabulous attraction we have to offer and all of the wonderful games. If you play them with skill, you'll find your little stack of points increasing 10, 20, even 100 fold. Now that you know the fundamentals, you're ready to step out onto the floor of the Gold Saucer. Your tour will continue at Card Square to the southwest. The card trader there will be your guide. I would of course be happy to exchange some of your gear for MGP before you venture on. While my associates and I strive to leave nothing unexplained, there truly is no substitute for first-hand experience, and I heartily recommend trying your hand at our many amusements for yourself. 
So you can talk to him again and you can exchange gear for MGP, which might sound like a good idea because most attractions require MGP to participate. However, you don't have to do that because you can earn MGP for nothing by participating in specific attractions. So this is someone we'll revisit a bit later on. I'm going to add you into the S on a chart and move to card square. Well, aren't you just the sweetest thing? Welcome to Card Square, home of the Triple Triad Tables. What's Triple Triad, you ask? Why, only the mind-bending, pulse-pounding, maddeningly Moorish card game that's taken around by storm. But don't take my word for it. Behold, can you not feel the tension in the air? Form a hand of five cards and play the role of a field general sending your bravest into battle. Should you wish to learn the rules and experience the excitement for yourself, you need only ask. Start today and we'll even throw in some complimentary cards to help you on your way. You can face off against a single opponent at any time or, if you crave an even greater test of your skills, take part in one of our regular tourneys. And believe me when I tell you there's no feeling quite like standing triumphant on a battlefield after vanquishing all corners. You really should try it. A minute to learn, a lifetime to master. That's Triple Triad. Ah, but I'm getting carried away. You have a tour to finish. Wonder Square is your next destination. Not that there is any hurry, of course. If you'd like to play a hand or two before you go, you need but say the word. So, in order to play, and get your first card, you will need MGP. So I'm going to um, leave that out for now, but we return. We will absolutely return because once you've unlocked it, Triple Triad cards can drop in certain dungeons. So I want to do that as soon as possible. So here I'm attuning to the Etherite before heading to Wonder Square on the right. I mean, doesn't that look amazing? <laughs> and let's talk to the gatekeeper. You look lost, honey. Why don't I show you around? It would be nice to talk to a woman for a change. Yeah, I can imagine. Fit your eyes on Wonder Square, from gripping games and awe-inspiring uh, attractions to the finest in fine dining and the freshest of refreshments. There's no end to wonders housed within these halls. And let's not forget the most wondrous of them all, El Colosso, as we lovingly call our mammoth cactua mascot, is a star of some of our most popular events. Suffice it to say, you won't want to miss them. Now, I know what you're thinking. With everything going on at the Gold Saucer, how can I even hope to keep up? But you needn't worry. My fellow gatekeepers and I will always be on hand to see that you don't miss a thing. For the continuation of your tour, I've been instructed to direct you into the waiting arms of my colleague Veleda at the Kakpok board. She's one of our most popular girls, and once you meet her, I'm sure you'll understand why. Tada for now. If I look at the map, there is an Ethernet chart, but I can't see it around, so it must be upstairs. So I can use these balls to propel me up. Pretty convenient. There are a couple of areas where they are located here and at Avent Square.
This is where you have Mahjong. Which I'm not going to get into right away. But yeah, a lot is happening at the Gold Saucer. It is definitely true. You can stay here all day and not really get bored. So um, I won't have the time to show you all in this video. I'm just going to show you what I tend to uh, do the most frequently. <laughs> there are some interesting characters, NPC characters around. There is a whole scene here going on, on repeat, um, that I encourage you to stop <laughs> and look at. You must experience it for yourself to um, bask in all of its glory. And again. Ah, there you are, my darling. I've been waiting for you. I'm Valeda, and I'd like to personally welcome you to Evan Square. The most spacious of all the areas of the Gold Saucer, Evan Square is a veritable cornucopia of pleasure and delight. Doubtless, the sizable stage in the middle of the square has caught your eye. This is a scene of some of our most sensational attractions, so don't be shy about taking center stage. And after the curtain has fallen, why not try changing your life forever? At the Jumbo Cackpot, all you need is a handful of MGP and a head full of dreams. Just choose four numbers and cast your hopes to the heavens. You never know just when Nimeya will smile down upon you. Now, as much as I've enjoyed getting to know you, I'm afraid it's time for us to part. The next and final leg of our, your tour takes you to Round Square. Don't think too hard about the name, my darling. Even I am not sure it's supposed to make sense. <laughs> I wonder what are the differences uh, of dialogues between male and female characters. There's at least one time where it's clearly going to be different with a previous gatekeeper when she says it's going to be to make a change for me to talk to a woman. I use a first time visitor I was told to expect. A thousand welcomes to the Gold Saucer and a thousand welcomes to Round Square. How can the square be round, you ask? I'm not sure I understand the question. Moving on to more important matters. Is that lofty peak not a sight to behold? That is Mount Coral, the main attraction here at Round Square. One of our most thrilling events pits our customers against each other in a challenge to see who can most swiftly scale its heights. I tell you, the view from the summit is a sight to behold. And that concludes your tour of the Gold Saucer. While I'm sure you're eager to start enjoying yourself, pray do not forget to return to the main counter and claim your complimentary gift. Aw, oh, she's so cute. But I'm not going to complete the tour right away. I'm talking to the gatekeeper again. Because I know a gate is ongoing and every gatekeeper around, so some of the girls we talk to, our gatekeepers, they will either tell you when the next gate is going to happen and what it's going to be, or if a gate is ongoing, they are going to uh, send you there right away. What is a gate? <laughs> you might ask. A gates are timed events that happen every 20 minutes Earth time uh, at the Gold Saucer at 00. 
20 and 40 every hour. For each slot, there are a pool of events and it's going to be one of those at random. And the great thing about gates is that you can earn a lot of MGPs, but you don't have to pay any to participate. So that's why I absolutely wanted to take part to one, even though I haven't done the slices right in a long time. <laughs> so I know I'm going to struggle. I'm not going to complete it successfully, but that's okay. Because even if I lose uh, very quickly, I still get 100 MGPs just for participating. And again, we paid none to take part. So you're always going to end up the winner. I have since then, however, beaten it a few times. Um, so I'll, uh, I need to record actually successful runs and, uh, and show you. I'll probably do a separate video on those things like the slice is right and uh, anywhere the wind blows. And you are going to see, if you've played Final Fantasy X, you recognize him right away. <laughs> so he's going to make bamboo appear and it's going to cut it and you have to predict where it's going to fall and you have to avoid it, which I was... <laughs> I told you, when I, I did this recording, I hadn't played it for a long time. So I honestly, after a while, you know how to anticipate where these things fall. Yeah, here I'm still a bit rusty, so I failed to anticipate as well as I'd like. But I survived round one. There are three rounds in total, as you can see in the duty, in the duty list. And here is an interlude. Now, I'm sadly not trying too hard, which I should have. Basically, you have this pile of gold. You can amass some gold, which will add 1000 MGP, but you have to avoid Daigoro. If Daigoro jumps on you while you are at the pile, even if you're not collecting gold, it is going to, to uh, throw you out. So please avoid that. I'm really bad. <laughs> You can't tell, I'm so bad right here. And I need... No, 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 no! Oh! I can't... <laughs> can't because again, now I've had... I've, I've done it a few dozen times since. So I know exactly what's going to happen. And uh, no, I can anticipate those a lot better. Although sometimes I still get ejected randomly, but that's fine. But that's okay, 1,000. I should have 2,000 because stupidly I didn't try to gather some gold. And I got both an achievement for earning my first 1,000 MGP and a title, Gambler, for it. And that's a gold source, so there are a lot of achievements which uh, you can view under the character tab. Okay, so n the next gate is going to be in 20 minutes. So I have the time to conclude the tour. And for that, I need to return to the entrance counter. Welcome back, honored guest. I trust that you've come away from the tour with a greater appreciation of all the gold salsa has to offer. As a token of our appreciation for your patronage, it is my great pleasure to offer you a complimentary gift from the personal vault of our esteemed proprietor. Well, knock me down with a chocobo stale feather. Is that a new customer I see? I could hardly have picked a better time to drop in for an impromptu inspection. M Master Roland, 
Yes, this lady here has but this moment completed her introductory tour. Is that so? Well then, allow me to personally welcome you to the Gold Saucer. I am Roland, good madam, the fellow entrusted with overseeing the daily affairs of this fine establishment on behalf of our esteemed proprietor, a great man if ever there was one. You are an adventurer, yes? Aye, your dress and bearing told me as much. I dare say then that on your travels you have seen firsthand the difficulties which yet plague our nation. Witnessed the struggles of Alamigo's displaced masses and those whose homes were consumed in the fires of the calamity. The Sultanate is not unsympathetic to their plight, of course, yet how can one begin to provide succor to such countless multitudes? One man had an answer. Godbert Mondeville had a dream, a dream of a house of untold wonders that would provide stable employment and lodgings to the displaced, mirth and merriment to the disconsolate, and prosperity and plenty to, to the Sultanate at large. To many of our patrons, the Gold Saucer is merely Eosia's foremost entertainment venue, a place to forget about their cares for the day. To me, it is one of the founding stones upon which our realm will be rebuilt, a miracle wrought by the hands of the greatest man I have ever known. Something tells me you understand that which I have told you, that you perchance share a similar dream. But I shall keep you no longer. The Gold Saucer and all its wonders await you, friend. Pray enjoy them to your heart's content. Till we meet again, may the spinner spell be ever kind. And the reward for the tour quest are Gold Saucer tickets. Now these tickets, you can use them at various attractions around the Gold Saucer, the small attractions which normally cost one gear to play, and here it's going to be free with a ticket. Okay, so introductory tour done. Now that I have MGPs, I can return to the card square, because remember I told you in order to play you needed some MGPs. So now we can play. Triple Triad is taking Eosea by storm. Care to try your hand at this entrancing new card game? Well, it's not new, it's from Final Fantasy VIII. And so another challenger is born. Welcome to the world of Triple Triad, where you play your cards against an opponent in a tense battle of skill, strategy, and the old dose of luck. Here at the Mandaville Gold Saucer, I am pleased to present all new players with the cards they need to get started. To play a match, however, first you'll need to build a deck composed of five cards from your registered card list. Oh, and I suggest speaking of the nearby Triple Triad trader should you wish to expand your card collection. You are now able to challenge opponents to Triple Triad matches. New cards can be obtained from a number of sources, including the Triple Triad trader, victory spoils from winning matches, and prizes from Triple Triad tournaments. Play against the Triple Triad Master to learn the basic rules of the game. Before you can begin, however, there are several steps that must be completed. First, you must use the cards in your inventory to register them to your card list. Your card list can be viewed via the Gold Saucer options found under Character in the main menu. Next, access your card decks, also located within the Gold Saucer options, and build a deck by selecting five cards from those you have registered. Speak with the Triple Triad Master once your deck is ready and she will engage you in a tutorial match. So here you receive five cards. So it may have sounded a bit complicated and that's fine and obviously there is a tutorial uh, which explains pretty much exactly what I've just told you. So I think the best thing is that I show you. So when you receive a card, it goes straight to your inventory. It's like with a minion whistle we obtained earlier. Before you can make anything with it, you have to use the item in your inventory. Now we receive an achievement for obtaining a triple triad card. 
All right, so now I need to go under on the main menu, under character, gold salsa, and I can go straight to card deck. You can see I have my five cards listed. I can go to recommended because we only have five cards to choose from anyways. Save, make sure you save, and now I have a card deck and I can challenge the triple triad master. And as you can see, she has that card uh, icon with an exclamation point and I'll get back to that after the match. Ready for a match, are you? Wonderful. I'm afraid I must adopt a number of MGP as per Triple Triad regulations, but rest assured that victory shall win you back those points and more. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce you to the game that is sweeping the realm. So now I can have a few informations. There are regional rules here, there are none. Um, most games will have some, but we'll get to that um, in time. And the only match rule is all open, which means I can see all the cards of my opponent. And here's the rewards. Are going to be 10 MGP. I have to pay 5 to participate. And there is a possibility of eating a card from the Triple Triad Master. Okay, so she gives you a few instructions. Uh, I'm not going to read them out because they go too fast. So instead, just look at how the game is played here. So, who goes first is decided at random. Uh, and here she placed a card. And now I have to play a card with ideally one of the side with a higher number. So here I place my three against her one and so that won the card over. So now it became blue. It's become by card basically in this game. So again Five against three, and because it's a five on the other side, I know she has no card that I can take over this one. So here I'm pretty safe. And so on, until all the greed is complete. And obviously you don't earn the card that you flipped. when the game ends, you get back your original deck. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get uh, the card she holds that I don't have to drop. So I'm going to play again until it does. So I'll see you as soon as I get that card. And here we are. Well done, now that you have an understanding of the rules, it's time for you to go forth and seek out the many Triple Triad players found here in the Gold Saucer and the world beyond. The game has gained an avid following and you're sure to find willing participants in various locales across Eorzea. And this is basically the information we're going to have here about how you can challenge any NPC with a card icon above their name. And by the way, if you see a card icon not with an exclamation point but with a star, that means that you've already played against them but you still have cards that you don't have in your card list. Like here, for instance, you can see the Triple Triad Master. She had that card icon with a star. So I want the card, but it's still only in my inventory. It is not in my card list. So now that I'm using it, it's going to be added to my card list. I can add it to my card deck as well. And now, as you can see, the Triple Triad Master doesn't have any icon above her name anymore. That's because I've already played against her 
and she doesn't hold any more cards that I don't have in my card list. But you can still play against her for fun. I mean, uh, I don't know why you would do that because uh, her games are pretty boring, but you could. Anyways, we need more cards to be able to challenge pretty much anybody. <laughs> Those cards are very, very weak. They're only here to uh, get you started and for you to learn the basics. But there are a lot of rules that uh, can be added to any game. And a given NPC typically has a few rules that can be uh, triggered at random. To spice things up a bit. So I'm going to return to the gatekeeper and ask what is a net, the next gate. And I realize I've forgotten to um, attune to this Ethernet, so I'm doing that. We haven't attuned to all the Ethernet shards around because there are a couple, as you can see from the list, uh, where Chocobo Square is basically, which ha I haven't visited yet at all. The tour didn't take us there. They only told us about it at the very beginning, but that's something I am going to investigate much later. And here's a little bit of magic editing. <laughs> I didn't go to the entrance, but rather to the Cactpot board. Welcome to the Jumbo Cactpot, where the Eorzea uh, of your dreams is only four digits away. First, you purchase a Jumbo Cactpot ticket from me. You then pick your four lucky numbers, any from zero to nine, that tickle your fancy and inscribe them upon your ticket. After that, simply wait till we announce the winning number to see if you have any matches. Check your digits from last to first. The more matches you have, the more Mandavian gold or sub points you'll win. If all your numbers match, then ding ding ding, you've hit the catbot. You'll receive an embarrassingly large number of MGP and an extravagant prize besides. And with the Jumbo Crackpot, the more participants there are, the grander the prizes become. Just imagine how many MGP you'll stand to win if all your friends participate. When the time comes to draw the winning number, look no further than the lovely Cackpot cashier. She will provide you with everything from first prize to consolation points. Last but not least, I will be here to assist you day or night if you're ever at a loss. Right, so the Cackpot is basically a lottery. The drawing takes place once a week on Saturdays at 8 p.m. CET. It's going to be 9 p.m. during the summer, by the way, because of the uh, time difference with Japan, I would guess. The reward for that little quest, well, for talking to the Jumbo Cactpot broker, is a voucher for 100 MGP. So I'm going to use it right away. And so, how it all works is that you talk to the broker and you can buy a ticket. You can buy up to three tickets. And it looks like this. So you have to select for each spot a number from one to zero to nine, rather. And obviously I am not going to show you the number I choose. So you can buy them at any time, you then have to wait until the drawing takes place and once it's done you can go to the cashier which is on the left side of the counter and you have to check if any of the numbers match going from the last digit to the first. So you first check if your last digit match the one that was drawn, if it does then you check the third and the second and the first. And if you get all, s all four, you get one million MGMP, roughly, a bit more than that. But it's worth it because the first ticket costs 100 MGP, then uh, the second 150, then the third 200. 
but you at least are going to win 1000 something in return even if none of your digits match so you are set to profit by participating regardless uh, of whether you're lucky or not all right now we talked about cackpot now i am going to talk about mini cackpot welcome welcome fair traveler care to test your luck with a mini cackpot ticket splendid now allow me to explain mini cackpot is a game of chance available to you thrice every day now I'm not going to read all that because again it's simpler if I just show you how it works. So the cackpot is once a week. The mini cackpot is three chances per day. So one ticket costs 10 MGPs and it resets at 4 p.m. CET knowing that again because of daylight savings that's going to move to 5 p.m. CT during the summer so here I'm getting a voucher again for 100 MGP which I'm going to use again So now let's purchase a ticket and see how it all works. So this is what it looks like. You have a grid, 3x3. Three three. On this grid there are the numbers 1 to 9 at in random spots. You can get 3 additional numbers to appear and from there you have to select a line. The total of the numbers on that line will give you the payout on the right. So if you get 1 to 3, which totals 6, for instance, you get 10,000 MGPs. So here I have 1 and 2, so I'm tempted to go with that. And unfortunately, if you do not get 6 but 7, you get 36. And the really sad thing is that I had a, a color next to that with nine, seven, eight, which would have earned me 3,600. So your goal really is to get either one to three or nine seven eight because those will give you out the biggest amounts going to try again no not such luck but you won't always get tickets that earn you ten thousand or even three thousand six hundred so don't be too sad you 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 will get some eventually it's actually a fairly regular occurrence. Just no such luck, luck today. Okay, so now time to do another gate. And this time the gate is called Air Force One. In my opinion, that's the easiest gate to max out. So easy enough, you just have to shoot at the target. Now I really recommend uh, a mouse for this one. It's a lot easier than with the controller. If you can have a mouse. It's doable with the controller, but it's going to uh, take you more skill. Max out, I think personally. I'm certainly more at ease with the mouse. I find it much more responsive and fast. Now, obviously, you don't want to uh, hit 
does red targets because they reduce your points by 20 for each one you hit. And you need a perfect score to max out on the MGP. Any mistake or if you miss a target or if you hit one of the bomb targets, you're going to lose at least 1000 MGP. And you have to be careful because sometimes, as you can see here, they appear all of a sudden. And you can hit them because you, you know, you started shooting before they appeared. They appear while you shoot and so you hit them even though they weren't around when you started shooting. So it's easy to be tricked into hitting them. So just be careful. But once you do a few runs, uh, you get a hang of it. Even though the runs are a little bit different from time to time, but... And you max out if you reach a score of 5,000, which I did here. Which is going to earn me an achievement. There are three Air Force One achievements. Uh, the last one is if you get 30 wins. And also I get the enemy at the gate one for... Uh, completing a gate successfully and that earned me 4000 MGP so that's very quick it took me a bit more than a minute and I'm already at 5000 Now again, those are only a few of all the activities in the Gold Saucer, but again, I, I need to do dedicated videos for that. Uh, it's, it would take way too much time to show you all in one regular um, playthrough video. Alright, and we just transported to the near future. While editing my video, I've realized that something was missing. And I'm not talking about Chocobo Racing or Lord Verminion's battles, because that's something I'll talk about and look into much later. Rather, there's something pretty essential missing. We talked about earning MGPs a lot, and I showed you one use for MGPs, which is uh, access some of the attractions. But a lot of the attractions' main purpose is to earn you even more MGPs. So what do we use them for then? Well, the game hints at it very early on, just after you arrive. Basically, MGPs cannot be exchanged for kills, but have to be exchanged for prizes instead and it's those prizes that I'm going to show you right now so to exchange for prizes you just need to talk to that person the gold saucer attended prize claim and I'm going to show you simply what you can exchange your hard-earned MGPs for so the first list has weapons level 50. There are usable weapons, by the way. You can use them for glamour, uh, which is an other whole subject I have to talk about pretty soon. But some of them, although they are usable uh, at level 50, they will mostly be used for glamour as is this one <laughs> as you can see the bow with a little sabo tender and all the lights the little star and everything which is rather charming so you can exchange for some of those you then have a number of 
gear, which is all level 1. So this is definitely just for use as glamour. So you had the trench coat that we saw our friend Roland wear. You have the gear the charming little gatekeepers are wearing. And then you have several, so to speak, local flavored um, llamas. Note that they used to be gender locked, but not anymore. So whether you're male or female, you can wear all of this. Now the third list has minions. And then some mounts. Some hairstyles. emotes some fashion accessories and a couple of bardings which are used by chocobos and finally the last list has a ton of orchestrion rolls and uh, some furniture for housing. But now let's talk price, shall we? As you can see, some of the furniture is 300,000 MGPs. The orchestral rolls, the cheapest ones start at 5,000, but then as you can see, you can multiply it by 10 for some of it. And then you have even a month <laughs> for 2 million MGP. So now you understand why I wanted to unlock this early in the game. <laughs> because you have to start as early as possible to earn as much MGPs as possible. And it's not over because we have two more prize claim attendants here. So this is a so-called Makai gear, which is again pretty expensive, but it's it's pretty. And Makai gear is something that I'll talk a bit about separately. And you also have the modern aesthetics saleswoman who has a couple additional hairstyles to sell you. And on top of all that, although I'm not showing it here, you can also buy triple trial cards. And some of them also fetch a very high price. But that's something I'll talk about more when I'll show you more about triple triad. Anyways, I hope this motivated you to spend a lot of time at the gold salsa to earn all those mgps you're going to need and now let's return to the original video so i'm going to leave for now and we are just going to return to ulda where i will be concluding this video and just so you see, traveling to Ulda from the Gold Sosa is free. If you want to travel to Limsaluminsa or Gridania, it's going to cost you 120 gil. But Ulda is free. So keep that in mind. So obviously, in order to uh, get to a room, I have to return to the Adventurer's Guild 
same thing as in Gridania, it's going to be the same in Limsalamza as well. And having unlocked inns in one city unlocks them in all other cities. You don't have to do any extra quests to uh, unlock that feature. And as you can see, the room looks a bit different, but the features are exactly the same. So again, not much that we can make use of right now. Except for uh, the journal and the bed, obviously. And this concludes this video. So. Today we've unlocked two cities and one extra destination, so not too shabby. And next time we will explore all that proper. So here I took you away from it uh, in a well, though it's still in the uh, Sanalan region, which is around all that. But next time we'll explore all that proper and I will unlock the disciples of land and hand available here. I'm kind of hoping that this next video will come out within four days of this one, thanks to the holidays, I'm not sure yet, but I'll try my best to have it out uh, on the 1st or 2nd of January at least. Until then, time for me to wish you all a great day, a wonderful week ahead, and until next time, bye bye.